Final Fantasy VII is absolutely incredible, but it has one major flaw. And we're going to go ahead and delve into all of the positives and negatives in my initial 10 hour plus playthrough of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Now, remember, guys, this has no spoilers whatsoever. So you won't be seeing any major story content, any major character or plot developments that can interfere with your enjoyment of the game as the game just launched recently as of the time that i'm recording this video and i usually don't like doing spoilers even after i've played the game for 100 hours i'll try to keep my videos spoiler free so rest assured you can watch this and enjoy it without being worried about being spoiled now i do plan on doing all of the side quests and content and having a more full playthrough probably after like 100 hours or however long it takes me to get through most of the content or all of the content that I will be getting through. So look out for that in the future. But before we get into the actual content here, guys, what's good, everyone? OJ here. Welcome back to another video. Please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you're someone new, and click that notification bell to get my Nintendo Switch and RPG videos first. Now let's go ahead and jump right into this here we're going to start off with my history with final fantasy because i think it sets a good precedent for how i go into it with final fantasy 7 rebirth i've been playing final fantasy since day one back the original nes the original old school final fantasy and all of the final fantasy games up through now now i'm not the biggest oh my gosh final fantasy is my favorite franchise person but final fantasy is absolutely in the top 10 or so of my favorite franchises so i have a long history with final fantasy playing from the nes all the way down through the playstation 5. now my other take with final fantasy 7 rebirth is final fantasy 7 remake now i played through the original final fantasy 7 remake on the playstation 4 and then also on the playstation 5. so i played through all that and i did enjoy it but i had some major issues with the game but i feel that it's very important to know that i did play ff7 remake so some of my thoughts about ff7 rebirth and how i feel about that in terms of certain things that they did in that game kind of carry over then also the improvements from ff7 remake to ff7 rebirth which we will get into here in this video and then also something that i know some people might be a little bit triggered on especially if you go online on twitter but also final fantasy 16. now this is 7 rebirth and i'm not going to sit here and harp on it too much but my take on final fantasy 16 is that to me it was awesome in terms of some of the stuff that they did i love sid i love some of the combat options but i think that it lacks some of the identity that makes final fantasy incredible like when it comes to multiple playable characters for example and some of that charm with the setting aesthetics and more now doesn't mean that ff16 is a bad game i just personally feel in comparison with all the most recent big mainline final fantasy games that this game final fantasy 7 rebirth does quite a number of things better so if you were looking at it from someone who purchased ff16 and thinking hey maybe this is just more of the same it's definitely not to me it's absolutely better in pretty much every single way over that game now let's get into the game itself and the positives so this game has incredible vibes impeccable vibes more like it this is final fantasy and it feels like it when it comes to the tone the atmosphere the style obviously it's ff7 so it's the ff7 characters but it's a completely new and different way it does not follow the original ff7 the original ff7 remake did but then it kind of broke away with it at many different intervals in the story and now this is essentially a whole new adventure with some of the things that happened in the original final fantasy 7 so i do like that style i love the vibe and the characters i think this is what sets a final fantasy game apart from many other games many other rpgs out there the characters are so good but in particular final fantasy 7 characters are some of the best characters in my opinion they just do awesome things in terms of the dialogue between one another the news outlets are nothing but shinra mouthpieces spewing propaganda only dumbasses believe that shit. Question, does that make me a dumbass? Uh, I didn't say that. 
some of the funny parts i think that the writing here is really well done so i love how bear is a little bit of that comic relief there are so many good things about the different characters here the nice little love triangle that's going on between Aerith, tifa and cloud red 13 and his shrewdness being a experiment gone wrong but then again not really gone wrong because he's on your team and he's awesome all of the characters just have this synergy and awesome vibes between them and i love it i absolutely love it and there's more characters to come when it comes down to who you get later in the game that's just great as well and it goes beyond just the characters that you play as there's also returning characters from final fantasy 7 remake that also reintroduce themselves in final fantasy 7 rebirth and it's really funny how some of them are introduced and kind of what happens i just love the vibes overall love the characters the music the sound effects everything just vibes perfectly i think they absolutely nailed it here it makes you want to keep playing keep exploring keep talking to characters the voice acting is so well done it's just one of those things where you have to play it to really understand and if you played ff7 the original if you played ff7 remake and down at this point it all just gels it almost feels like it was a effortless flow from one to another so i have to give them props for that and say it's a really good thing about this game now let's talk about the most important thing here that's the gameplay gameplay is phenomenal it is a massive step above final fantasy 7 remake which was already really good now in this game for those who don't know it's an action rpg which is awesome you can move around freely you can switch characters freely you can do different types of attacks mash the square button to do different attacks you have triangle attacks as well or different modes that you can operate from you have quick shortcut settings that allow you to use your atb gauge that fills up as you do different attacks or take damage and then you can pull off big moves as well and abilities in addition to magic that uses your mp all of the standard stuff that we saw in final fantasy 7 remake and in some previous final fantasy games but the difference here is how they layer in all of the other stuff we know about the limit breaks but then the synergy combo system is what i really love about final fantasy 7 rebirth this is essentially dual text triple text that you learn and as you go on in the game you get more of them and they give you a lot of cool and different things and reasons to do them as you fight and build up synergy between your characters you can pull off these incredible synergy combos depending on the situation you're going to have to absolutely use them so i love absolutely love the synergy combos reminds me of chrono trigger which makes sense because there are some people that did make chrono trigger that are on this game that helped out with the combat summons are also back looks awesome open world traversal is here and i think structure wise this is what really sets apart final fantasy 7 remake which was just too segmented too closed in to midgar everything just felt boxed in and enclosed in final fantasy 7 remake this one completely opens it up to where you can freely go about you can freely collect resources you can freely find different places to go and different places on the map and explore and find chests it's just a much bigger breathing open world although it is a bit empty throughout the world in terms of when you see enemies and i know there's some more populated areas than not but it's still far behind a game like let's say xenoblade chronicles x which that game came out back in 2015 on the nintendo wii u and looks more geographically impressive and more dynamic than this game so i do like the fact that it's opened up over what midgar has but i don't think that it's that impressive when it comes to geographical setting and what they do now it is better than ff7 remake but does fall short compared to other games other big rpgs that i've played but getting back to what's awesome as well the combat simulator the side quest the mini games to me this is all the stuff that makes final fantasy final fantasy and awesome and i love that here especially the combat simulator which is better in this game than what it was in final fantasy 7 rebirth it's been upgraded the character that you use to access that that is far more involved now where you're going to different points and unlocking things and then you're able to go back to the combat simulator and unlock more things and get rewards and new materia and new items it's great it's fantastic and you're going to be spending a ton of time in that combat simulator because i know i am i want to go out it really kind of encourages you to go out 
find different things, assess all the enemies, break down their weaknesses and not, because then you'll unlock new things in the combat simulator, which can then unlock new different abilities for you, fights, and you can even work on your craft as well. I love it. I think it's great, and I never want the combat simulator to go away. Keep on evolving it from game to game. Not going to have any spoilers here, but the side quests are great. Mini games are great as well. Once again, I am about 10 plus hours in, so I haven't experienced everything. But so far, from what I've experienced and from what I've seen, it's really good. And I like it. I think that it's a step above, obviously, FF7 Remake and definitely a step above FF16. That was all good, right? We had a lot of positives, a lot of good stuff in the game. A few negatives that I sprinkled in, but a lot of positives. But the one major flaw and this is a really huge flaw and the graphics are busted in this game like the two different graphic modes are absolutely busted in this game now let's just first start with the mode that i'm playing on which is the performance mode this offers supposedly a 1080p resolution at 60 frames per second which that does provide smooth gameplay i love the gameplay makes it really fun to play it's awesome everything moves great but it's at a severe cost of the sharpness in the visuals and the detail. I play Switch games and I'm used to that. I'm used to lower resolution. I'm used to games looking a bit softer. However, the graphical style of Final Fantasy VII being a more realistic look with its art and kind of what it tries to do, especially in the open world and the softness of the visuals with whatever upscaling technique or graphics that they're using here, it doesn't mesh well. It doesn't vibe it doesn't look symbiotic and looks like it works together it looks like they're going or kind of mashing against each other when it comes to the art style and the graphics and the upskiller or whatever they're doing here it looks blurrier than some of the rpgs that i've played like xenoblade chronicles 3 or shin megami tensei 5 or even dragon quest 11 s on the nintendo switch now i do think that those games have the benefit of having a more stylized art style i think that more stylized or cell shaded or cartoon looking or whatever the case is right those fit a bit better with softer resolutions and all that but i just think that also the upscalers or whatever they're doing in those games to make it look sharper it just does a better job of it and here with final fantasy 7 rebirth it's just not working for me in terms of what i'm seeing on my eyes on my 4k television or even on my 32 inch 4k monitor but i do want to make sure that i stress that after playing for a number of hours my eyes have pretty much completely adjusted to the performance mode in the 60 frames and that frame rate does help smooth things out to where it's not so bad even with the softer look so i think that the more that you play on the performance mode and even if it does look a bit blurry i think that your eyes can adjust to it just because of how well it does run for the most part so it's not too bad overall once you get used to things while square enix does offer a graphics mode that halves the frame rate down to 30 frames per second and greatly improves the visuals in motion the game looks too choppy i don't know what is going on here i can't quite put my finger on it nor am I digital foundry, but the graphics mode seems to be the worst 30 frames per second game I have ever played on the PlayStation 5 or just in general. I think for some reason it's way worse than other 30 frames per second JRPGs or games. I mean, I played Kirby in the Forgotten Land, and while that's 30 frames per second, it looks smooth and animates smooth, everything seems fine but this doesn't seem like that it doesn't look like that to me despite it supposedly being 30 frames per second now and it almost feels as if the graphics and the style are too good for the frame rate in the graphics mode the 30 frames per second also causes issues with the gameplay final fantasy 7 rebirth is a fast paced game with precise blocking and timing for combos the weird graphics mode in terms of how it looks combined with the 30 frames per second completely throws that timing off on the dynamic difficulty although we can do it on any difficulty but definitely for people playing on dynamic difficulty now if you are or plan on playing on easy or normal this might not be as big of an issue using the graphics mode and the 30 frames per second but for me it creates issues that i don't think it's worth for the sake of better graphics because of how they've done this graphics mode it just doesn't vibe well with everything when it comes to combat and the pace of combat in final fantasy 7 rebirth so 
In all, both modes are not ideal, and it's the only real major issue with an otherwise phenomenal game. Now, I still have plenty of content to sink my teeth into, and I do believe that Final Fantasy VII Rebirth might be the best game on the PlayStation 5, but I still need to put more time in to explore the world and consume the story, which also is excellent so far. So, what are your thoughts when it comes to Final Fantasy VII Rebirth? Are you planning on picking it up? Are you playing it right now? What are your thoughts on the graphics and performance mode? What does it do well? What does it not do so well in your eyes? And how do you compare it to Final Fantasy VII Remake, Final Fantasy XVI, and the recent Final Fantasy games? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this video here. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you are someone new. Click that notification bell and check out my other Nintendo Switch RPG videos and more right here on screen. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys for the next one. Peace.